Last year I came here to Los Angeles to see the making of a Hollywood blockbuster and I was lucky enough to be able to join its budding British star on location. The movie is Swordfish, an action thriller starring John Travolta as the coolest man in the world. Well, he'd have to be with a haircut like that. Too bad, you gotta die. It also sees the Hollywood debut of one of our top sporting heroes. No, not Vinnie Jones, the TBR Tuscan. It took my breath away when I first saw it. Also, you look cool in a car like that. I mean, you know, you just look cool. You could be a 90-year-old guy and you'd look pretty cool in that car. <laughs> cool, but unavailable. TVRs aren't yet on sale in the US due to costly emissions legislation, but their scarcity provided a real attraction to Hollywood. Because it was scripted as a Lamborghini Diablo, which is a fantastic car, but it's a little played out cinematically. To Americanize this is far more exotic than anything that Ferrari or Lamborghini do. And it's just that bit more exotic to have a set of Preston number plates on it than it, <laughs> than it would be to have the California ones. So I kind of put the bug into our, our, our transportation department and our picture vehicle coordinator, Randy White, and like, please talk to these people. We got an email from a guy called Randy saying we'd like a car for the next John Travolta movie. And I, my reaction being a fairly cynical person was like, oh yeah, right. But it wasn't a wind-up and soon TVR was sending four identical Tuscans over from Blackpool to Los Angeles together with their man with a spanner, Mike Vernon. Uh, we've got one main car, uh, which is just for street shots and a clean car, and then we sent three more over, uh, which one's had camera mounts fitted to it, and the other two are one's got uh, bullet holes going in the side of it and then we've got the last one which is for racing around the streets and handbrake turning and whatever they wish to do with it and they told me what they want to do and then I've worked with the American mechanic that's worked before with stunt drivers and he tells me what they want translates it in English to me and we we try and work it out Top Gear joined the production in downtown LA to shoot the film's big car chase. It's work that requires meticulous planning, ingenuity and a large supply of toy cars. Then after all the stunt drivers have done their stuff, it was time on set for JT and his co-star Hugh Jackman. What's going on? We've got a tail. Hold on. It drives more like a race car to me than uh, even a street car. And I get to rock, drive it. And Hugh got to drive it. You'll have to improvise. Take the wheel. What? Take the wheel. He got to drive it more than I did. Did I got to shoot guns out of it. I mean, we're fairly politically incorrect, so we don't care whether we get the good guy or the bad guy, as long as he's cool. <laughs> and, I mean, and this, this character is... It's just perfect. Next up was the end to the car chase, and the crew were set up down a seedy alley, where the local residents were already getting pretty excited at the thought of seeing a star. Each shot takes around three hours to complete, and now it was time for the big finale. That's the vehicle. And on this track and those cables, it's going to launch this way. And underneath this plate you're standing on here, and when the vehicle gets right here, it's going to launch head over heels and go into this restaurant here. Meanwhile, the star TVR was being replaced by its own stunt double. 